Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm hitting y'all with a part two, which is actually the first I've ever done. I don't usually do part two to videos, but I'm hitting y'all with a part two of my uh, tycoon video, which is now referenced as part one and stuff. So if you if you like if you haven't seen my part one of how to make a tycoon, then I suggest you go watch that because I'm not starting over from literal scratch. I'm I'm like using everything we already did in the first tycoon video now. And stuff like that so yeah and stuff so this video basically is covering a few like um etc things because you say like because because actually this was requested by one of my subscribers and stuff like that so i'm gonna be explaining to you guys how to like add more droppers more like walls and like just things where, like the player can buy and like expand their tycoon and stuff like that i'm sure you guys had to have like a gui shop like they can um buy game passes and stuff then like maybe they have like a two times game pass like they buy it for like 300 robux and then um if they have the game pass they get like double the amount of cash or something they get two times cash something like that right so i'll be showing you guys just little mi misnellous things like that and stuff with tycoons this video will be relatively short i'm not really showing y'all uh, i'm not walking through y'all with stuff it's more of just explaining little detailed things but showing you at the same time of course and stuff yeah once again thank you guys for all the support and stuff like that every day we're getting more and more subscribers and people join the discord i really appreciate it links to join my roblox group and discord can be found in the description so yeah but all right so first things first right uh before i even get, get started i know you guys can't see the names but that's because i dragged over the file and it won't like show the names for me to have to fix like to fix to where it shows all the, to where it shows the names right now i'd have to like delete all the humanoids then read then like then like insert another humanoid then copy over the names and i didn't really feel like doing all that but like here if i whenever i run or play the game then yes then i can see all the names i just wanted i just wanted to clear it up in case anyone, anyone was wondering why like the names aren't showing but yeah so when i do test the game it the names will show but yeah okay now to explain hmm, i'm not even really sure how to put this into words but okay so so when you have something like one of these little um circles on the ground where like you know you step over it actually i'm gonna just leave it just and run while i, while I talk because it's just easier with the names like by floor for example right the whole like the whole point of it is is that what's it called like to be able to get like the vector which is the location in other words for the vec for the location and stuff of where you want that certain part to spawn and stuff like that you need to really play around with the math you can't say I mean, you could, in your game, you could just set it to, like, just one vector. Like, just set it to, like, like you manually set it to a vector and stuff. But that's just not, that's just not that good, though. Because that means you can't move the tycoon. Like, if you have it set to a vector, right? Like, if I have it to where the floor piece spawns only, like, right here and stuff like that. If I were to move my tycoon over, it would still spawn over here. But I don't have that, though. The way I have it is, um where it takes the it takes the location of uh what's it called we'll call this the purchaser right because that's where you go to purchase the uh, we'll say upgrade and then or expansion i should say but yeah and stuff like that it takes the location of that and then it like multiplies the vectors and stuff like that to then calculate it's pretty much doing math to calculate where to put whatever part needs to be placed and where it needs to be placed at so it's calculating uh, the distance between here and here to where the wall needs to be placed and stuff like that. And, like where all walls need to be placed. I mean, the walls are just one. It's just one big model. So it just, it places, it's, it more centers itself around everything. But yeah, it's like that. So I'm going to show you guys the script. I mean, you guys already seen it before, but um, here, uh, yeah, floor spawner. Here, as you guys can see, like right here, it's pretty much, it's pretty much like you're just doing math well you're getting the comp you're getting the game to do math for you and stuff right i'm taking the p i'm taking the position of um the where is it right there of the floor purchaser i'm taking that position then i'm adding a vector plus 1.5 and then leaving uh y and z the same and stuff like that and that's how it gets the floor the floor is more simple than like the walls or dropping and stuff like that because the floor is the floor is literally you're just putting it in the middle of something. Just putting something in the middle of something is it's not really that hard. Now the dropper one is more complex. But just to sum it up, sum it all up though, to to get to like where you like 
you get it so it'll spawn wherever you want regardless of if you um move around your tycoon and stuff like that you're gonna have to play around with the numbers no one knows exactly where it'll be like no one doesn't matter how, how experienced you are something like that no one knows exactly where where like like the exact calculations to like put in to put into here and stuff like that you're gonna have to play around with it it took me probably like about an hour to figure out all the calculations for like uh, i want to say it's like it's three of these right yeah like three of these stuff like that so that it would all spawn correctly and stuff like that because you gotta you gotta really play around with it and stuff like that so that's pretty much how you, how you get the positioning right and stuff because i feel like that's like the most complex thing Building and stuff like that is not really that hard. And setting the price amount stuff is not really hard. It's the positioning really. Now to add, literally, if you guys are wanting to add more things, it is literally simple. All you're doing is renaming and retyping a few things from the script. Let's say you wanted to you wanted to add another purchaser, you could do control like while well, having a select it, do control plus D, which duplicates it. And then um move it right here, right? Then all you gotta do change the name to let's say let's say this is our second floor floor two spawner then floor level two spawner script we go in here and then of course we would make a second floor right we would make a second floor in server storage or we could use the same the same floor completely is up to you and then obviously we would probably want to increase the price to like maybe 250 right so then, it's, and then it takes away 250 and stuff right and then of course you would change the positioning so it like sets itself correctly right so what's it called so yeah that's how you would add another purchaser and stuff like that right um i can just delete that yeah no. let me just delete this and delete okay so let's see making another purchaser now if you're wanting to kind of make more droppers it's it, honestly guys it's, it's literally the same thing control d then just slide it down. Well, Control Plus D to be exact, and then just slide it down. Rename it just like we did before, right? Rename it, rename everything. Then of course you would make another dropper and put it in server storage, right? Then you maybe print, printer dropper two, the, depending on whatever name. It's completely up to you though, whatever name and stuff like that, right? And then I, as you guys can see, the dropper script it's more it's more math. This is what really took a while. This is much more math and stuff, but the hard work pays off. We're trying to figure out a to fig, trying to figure out exactly where it needs to be put, because then it's more of like an automatic system to regardless of wherever you place it, it's always going to spawn in the correct position in the correct positions. That's why it's always like worth it to spend to take the time to um to take the time to get the coordinates right and stuff like that without just choosing one set location and then you're not able to move your segment at all and stuff. Yeah, you would just change the name, change the script, of course. Um, yeah, you would have another dropper and stuff like that, and then you would obviously change up the coordinates so it spawns more to the left. Uh, change, changing up the positions should be much easier than before since all you're literally doing is just moving it across, um, you're just moving it across the x axis, so you would just change the uh, x value. You would just change the x value of everything, and then yeah, you should literally just change the x value of everything, and it should be equal, and then yeah, you just move it down. But that's how you add another dropper and stuff like that. And then um, you could also change uh, what's it called? I'm trying to think. What's, oh yeah, you could also change uh, what's it called? The like the parts that come out of it and stuff. Cause oh, did not mean to type that type W. But um, where is the uh? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? That's the collecting script. Where is like? Wait, I just realized. Where is the print dropper? I just thought about it. Um, wait, this is, oh, that, wait, that's, oh, that's the spawner, I'm stupid, that's the spawner, if I go into server storage, oh yeah, then find the dropper, there we go, right, so, as you guys can see, right, the way it's set up right now, we have it to what's it called, it doesn't necessarily have a set amount of, like, value set to it, but you could add value, though, depending on whatever it is you're trying to do, right, like, the way, the way this works, right, when the parts drop down, it slides across the conveyor and touches here. Now, what you could do is you could name the parts differently. Like you can name these on um, printer parts, then the other parts be uh, print uh, level two printer parts, and then and then when it uh, reaches the conveyor, which if you go over here, right, and then wait, no, oh, no, not conveyor. When it reaches the collector, right, then you could have it read the name and stuff. You can have to read the name and stuff like that. And then if it says 
uh, printer parts, you award the person five cash. If it says level two printer parts, you give them ten cash. You feel me? So that's really how you just change it. Uh, that's how you just change up all the positions and just. Let's say you just add more things, like add more spawners, um, more just like places where you can just expand the tycoon and stuff like that. And yeah, that pretty much covers that. And then lastly, I want to show you guys how to um, um, what's it called? Let's go. Oh, wait about game passes. Okay, so I'm gonna just make a very nice, simple, basic UI. We're gonna go head on over starter GUI, insert a screen GUI. We'll call this our game pass GUI. Or well, no, well, store would probably be better. Yeah, store would probably be better. Then we'll insert. We can insert a um, yeah, we can insert a frame. Yeah. And just scale it a little bit. Well, no, no, no. We, we, we need a frame for the. We don't need a frame just for the video. Nah, we don't need that. We just put a text button on the side. Cause I know you've seen in Taiku how they just have like just buttons over here. But yeah, and then just scale it like that. We'll bring it out a little bit. You can name the text button um double cash button. Then of course, then of course, you could customize it a little bit. No, I'm gonna just rich text, scale text, then bold it. Uh, make it make text white. Boom. Eh, yeah, there you go. All right, all right, looks looks good, looks good. All right, now I can insert a mm, insert a. We'll say I'm I'm gonna go to service script. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go to service script to insert buying a game pass. But what's it called? I don't think it matters either way, but still. Then you call this your purchase script. You call this purchase script. Okay. Right. And then, of course, we want to get the local marketplace service. Local MPS, which which is just short for marketplace service. Equals game, get service, marketplace service. Then you could do scripts.parent, mouse on one click, connect function. And then do MPS. I mean that's it. Uh, you could do MPS prompt purchase. Well, actually no, prompt game pass purchase. And then you would put the player. You would get the player and the game pass ID. You could really just do script stop here. For this, you could just really just do like it depends what you're using here. If you're using a server script, you could do script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent which takes a minute or you could go over to a local script and then get the local player and then from there just um do a local player and then just put the player and then of course you would put your game pass id like your player would be this would be player this would be your player instance and then here would be your game pass id number and stuff like that that's just an example stuff like that and then right you own that and then let's see if we go over here back to our collector right here right we can do script up parent dot touch connect function hit right and then what we could do is see local name right here uh what's it called this is the player's name and stuff like that so we we don't necessarily have the player instance but we, well honestly we really could we just we could since we have their name we could get the player instance but the point is then you would of course want to get the player instance actually you do local player is equal to game top players find first child then name since that's the player's name right there you go then you have the player and then after doing all that so then it searches it searches and finds the player's name and see, and see if it finds a match we can do if player owns game pass i believe it's yeah Game Pass async because this is this is not a flow. It should be like this. On the Game Pass async, then you would insert the Game Pass ID here. So we'll just put numbers. Then, right, you could have it to where it's like instead of you you could have it to where it's like times two or just manually just do plus ten or whatever and stuff like that. You could really just do that and then you would have else so that if the player doesn't own the Game Pass, they would just get the normal amount. They would just get the normal amount, which is the default amount, and stuff like that. So that's how you have, like, in a way, a multi uh, multiplier and stuff like that. For uh, what's it called? If you own a game pass, that gives you double cast, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's, that's just a few extra things with Tycoon and stuff. So, hopefully, this video was helpful in case it was, these were other things you wanted to know how to do with Tycoons and stuff like that. I'm still working on a custom leaderboard. 
video for y'all. I'm hoping I'm lucky drop it later today for y'all. Something like that. Cause I feel like I feel like a lot of people want to see that. I really do appreciate all the support y'all been showing and stuff like that. Y'all been real consistent with the support and stuff. And I'm gonna stay dropping as much videos as I can for y'all and stuff like that. So I appreciate y'all watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, or join my Discord and Roblox group. Links can be found in the description. And yeah, all scripts will be found. Well, um, I mean. <sighs> I was gonna say I'll leave all the scripts in the description, but I kind of did that before. Mm, I'm trying to think. Mm, I'll leave all the yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. I'll just leave all the scripts because I did change a few things with some of the scripts and stuff like that. So I would just leave all the scripts in the description and stuff like that. It'll be updated ones, so it won't be the exact same ones from part one. It's just updated ones, stuff like that, to feature the stuff in this video and stuff like that. But yeah, though, if you guys need any help or anything, leave a comment down below or join the Discord. DM or ping me. So yeah, I'll see y'all though.